Welcome to Times Pro's uh, 101st Leadership Leaves Lecture on very interesting topic, uh, AI and branding. And it's uh, one of those, uh, you know, application part of uh, the, uh, you know, generative AI as we keep talking about it. I'm sure you would have seen quite a few applications, quite a few uh, instances. But, uh, you know, with Mani Mala's uh, 25 years plus years of experience, I'm sure you'll have a lot of uh, actionable insights on the session. And before I hand over the platform to uh, Mani Mala, let me have the pleasure of introducing her to you all of you. She comes with a wealth of experience uh, spanning 25 years, uh, a significant portion of which, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, she has been, de has been dedicated to building and growing and thriving brand and, and crafting effective business and marketing strategies for both B2C and B2B. She had the privilege of working across diverse industries, including consumer goods, education, media, e-commerce, and health tech. And she has held leadership roles at Delight and Bennett Coleman, where she successfully steered the renowned brands Febicol and Times of India's NIE to two levels of success. She has successfully initiated and managed her entrepreneurial venture called Mums and Babies for nearly 6.5 years. However, owing to the business and health challenges posed by the pandemic, she had made the difficult decision to temporarily suspend the operations. Mums and uh, Babies was originally established as a direct-to-consumer brand specializing in maternity and baby care, which eventually evolved into a health tech platform offering comprehensive pregnancy and uh, parenting support services. In her last, last role, she spearheaded marketing and business development at the Advertising the Standards Council of India, ASCII, elevating ASCII's brand identity and positioning it as a thought leader in self-regulation and responsible advertising. And uh, the industry that she worked, like I said earlier, just to uh, uh, you know, uh, reinforce, she worked in uh, FMCG, print media, education, e-commerce, health tech, uh, especially in the domains of business management, brand and marketing strategy, digital marketing, market research, new product development and launch, public relations, cross-functional team management, and uh, many more. And uh, she also has been uh, uh, awarded many, and uh, prominent among them uh, are Indian Women uh, Excellence Leadership Award in 2017, and also uh, Outlook Business Woman of Worth in 2019. And she is a graduate from uh, I'm Calcutta, uh, uh, you know, to having done her PGM. And uh, like I said, she's going to talk to us uh, on this wonderful topic. And I'm sure, like you said, we're going to have a lot of actual insights. Over to you, Mani Mala. Thank you so much for joining us on Saturday evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Nagendra. And a very, very good evening to everybody present here. And um, I think, you know, uh, I, would, I would like to start by thanking the entire team at uh, Times Pro, especially Dr. Nagendra and Nandita for constantly working to present this webinar. And uh, I think the topic is something that you know we all are actually grappling and learning and i think you know i'm no expert in this but whatever is my experience and my knowledge around it i'm happy to share with everybody and i'm looking forward to you know some exhilarating discussion good questions and uh, though I, I i don't know if i will be able to answer them but maybe we all can think and you know uh, work together towards finding some answers so maybe, you know, I'll just share the presentation that I have made for all of you, a couple of slides and whatever is my understanding of artificial intelligence in, uh, you know, branding. Uh, so uh, let me just take the opportunity to share it. Uh, is my uh, slide visible? Yes, I think maybe. Yeah, now it's, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Just give me a second. Let me just, uh, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, uh, as Dr. Nagendra already said, I have worked 25 years in brand and marketing across diverse industries. And, um, uh, and I also like, you know, sharing whatever I learn and from my experience, uh, you know, and hence I keep involved, involving myself with a lot of management institutes as guest faculty and also as board members. Uh, so here we are today. I think we are ready to discuss the very, very pertinent topic in today's world of marketing. How is AI revolutionizing marketing and how is AI revolutionizing the consumer, uh, the brand relevance? But, but, you know, before we maybe delve into what is AI powered branding or how is it revolutionizing, let us maybe take a little step back and understand, you know, the basics of branding. 
I I know I I I know I'm sure most of you know much more than this, but I just wanted to, um, you know, do a very basic definition of what is branding, you know. Uh, so so the way we know it is, you know, branding is a process of creating unique identities for our brands, for our products and services. Uh, so what comes to mind when we say branding? We, we think of logos, we think of brand names, we think of colors associated with brands, we think of fonts associated with brand. And for many other brands, we also think about mascots or even jingles associated with brand. And you know, why do we do this branding? It is to build a positive perception of our product and services in the minds of our consumers. And how does that help? Why do we spend so much of time, effort, money, resource on branding? Is because it builds trust and loyalty for our brand. And how does trust and loyalty help? What is the end goal that we are seeking here? We the end goal is keeping our brand relevant in the minds of our target audience so as to secure you know enduring preference for our brands relevance is a very relative term sometimes because you know with time with newer technologies many well known brands in the i think in the front of our eyes have lost relevance i mean think nokia or you know think blackberry there are so many brands uh, because either they have not kept up with the technology or because the technology they have they were using were redundant or whatever may be the case or maybe a new player comes in the market and does a far better technology and far better branding and marketing and you know uh, communicates it in the best possible way to their target audience and hence the audience starts building a relationship with the new brand in the sector and uh, you know uh, moves away from the brand which was probably a number one at that at, at some point in time so the next slide is you know so how is ai powered branding any different is it anything different honestly no the essence of branding remains the same our our why we do branding or the end goal that we are looking at achieving I think it remains same. What has changed is that it has become much more granular today. Uh, earlier, you know, when uh, in the traditional world, we did not have so many informations about our customers. So everything was an assumption. We Every branding strategy or a marketing strategy was based on assumptions. Uh, it was something like, you know, if a customer X lives in location Y, uh, maybe earns a certain amount of money, then probably he or she will prefer a certain kind of product or probably will be using a certain kind of services. But everything were just assumption. And hence, you know, and since we did not have the granular data and information, we branding was more like, you know, shooting arrows in the dark. So we make one format or two different formats, so maximum three different variants of our communication, and uh, and you know shoot it in the dark, hoping that it will hit some target and it will get us conversion and it will get us sales. So you know campaign conversion rates earlier used to be very low, in fact very poor. Forget television. Television we did not even have a scope to measure except for few households where, you know, TAM had a rich and we could understand what are the viewing patterns, what are the viewing, you know, um, behaviors of the users in those households. But apart from that, we had no, you know, ways to understand who is watching what in a television. But even when we started reaching out to consumers through email, uh, we, I mean, you know, again, we used to just shoot out bulk email uh, barely, probably, you know, 5% would open those emails and probably a, even a, even lower rate would actually convert uh, through those emails. Uh, but as a brand, we kept on sending out these bulk emails. And honestly, I think we were responsible for making the spam box famous. But today, uh, the world has changed thanks to digitalization, thanks to available technologies, thanks to the reach of mobile phones, you know, even in the most 
uh, smallest of towns and cities, even tier three today uses mobile. And um, thanks to many of our service providers, that internet is available across uh, you know, regions today. And hence, we are able to collect because everybody is holding a gadget in their hand and they are viewing or they are browsing uh, whatever site, you know, and whatever brands. So we have the avenue to collect large and large number of data and information. And, you know, when we analyze or sort and analyze these data sets, they enable us to, you know, uh, club our consumers into different segments and hence enable us to personalize our communication towards this consumer. And, and how, what does that do? It builds a deeper bond between the brand and the, influ uh, and the uh, end user because we talk to them in a language, in a, in a you know, uh, offering them products and services which are more relevant to them, which, which is something when, when they are looking out for something and we reach out to them at that very moment, I think that is when we build, you know, a deeper connection and that ends up building a, uh, 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 higher, you know, enhanced brand relevance for us. And of course, and uh, which leads to, of course, you know, uh, the holy grail of any sort of branding activity, the higher brand equity. That is what entire brand and marketing team works day in and day out doing various activities. The sole goal is to have a higher brand equity in the market, a higher brand relevance with our target audience. So, you know, how do we integrate this artificial intelligence in our branding strategies? Uh, so, you know, before I move into that, at the crux of every branding activity is the customer's demand and customer's expectation. And today I think customers demand the world. And hence, the only way to satisfy these demands and the increasing expectations is by using machines to create elevated brand experiences. Human beings will never be able to sort or, you know, do um, uh, analyze the large chunk of that data, which we call the big data, uh, by themselves. And hence, we need machines, we need artificial intelligence to sort that data and give us meaningful analysis and report of the same. So, you know, so, so let us quickly probably take a look at, you know, what are these evolving customer demands today? Uh, today, customers are not satisfied with brands just offering them products, services, discounts, coupons. They are looking at personalized experiences. They are no more happy about, I know we all are so used to and now uh, brands reaching out to us with personalized offer. Like if I'm looking at buying a house, I'm looking at buying a re uh, renting a house, or I'm looking at buying a particular product, I want the X, you know, brand to reach out to me with very specific promotion about what I am looking at, you know, at the location that I'm looking at. Uh, if I'm looking houses in Bombay and somebody, you know, sends me message talking about a house in Pune, or a house in Bangalore, it doesn't work for me anymore. So I need everything personalized. Convenience. Today, I think uh, we have gotten spoiled. Everything is at the tip of, a, you know, uh, at our fingertip. In fact, sometimes not even a fingertip. We are now able to order products, order services, you know, through even voice. Uh, so. So it's, it's almost like, you know, a genie coming and solving all our problems. This is the convenience that is seeking convenience, which has given birth to, you know, uh, services like Blinkit, services like Zepto, you know, enabling uh, uh, groceries to reach our home in within 10 minutes, uh, because that is the kind of convenience we seek. Uh, if erstwhile, I do not think our, you know, the generation before us would ever even thought that it is possible. Uh, the, the Amazon itself was, uh, you know, a, re a revelation that, oh, wow, you know, we can order things by sitting at home, but now we can order things not only by sitting at home, but also get them in a couple of minutes. 
24 by 7 accessibility. Gone are the days when, you know, customer services were open from 10 a.m. to, um, uh, you know, 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. Today, it is all about 24 by 7, every service. It, earlier, you know, we, we knew only fire, health, and police, which were, you know, 24 by 7 available and uh, accessible. But today, I think every other service, even a food delivery service is open till 3 a.m. And I don't think it's long before they are going to be 24 by 7. Uh, so, so that's the kind of accessibility we are looking at. Seamless integration, you know. If I'm, we, we today want to you know a seamless integration between our gadgets. We want a seamless integration between online and offline also. So, you know, if I'm shopping something online and, and, and you know, uh, there's something offline, so everything has to be very seamlessly integrated so that my experience is wholesome. Uh, if I fill up my details on an online form and tomorrow if I go to the establishment and they again ask me to fill a form, I think today we get offended. It's like I have already spent my time and effort in, you know, filling up my information and I'm not going to do it again. So that's the kind of, uh, you know, interaction that we are looking at. And last but not the list is in you know, hyper relevance today. Personalization is also becoming a passe. We are in fact looking at hyper relevance, the next level of personalization, you know, it's like almost instant satisfaction. If I'm thinking of a vacation to Switzerland, I think I'm already looking at, you know, MMT or the other apps or other travel companies to immediately send me everything about Switzerland, uh, packages, discounts, offers, flights, uh, you know. So, so that's the kind of uh, hyper-personalization we are looking at today. So now how does AI amplify its branding? AI amplifies branding in three different ways. Number one is various tools and, you know, that help us personalize our branding messages to our consumers. So, you know, leverage AI to personalize your consumer experience and drive brand loyalty. Second is automation. So, so that is the probably the, you know, the in-house thing. So we automate a lot of the marketing task uh, because uh, there are too many channels, too many marketing activity, because gone are the days when, you know, we used to do probably just one campaign or two campaign a year, two or you know, five print ads a year, or, you know, uh, a very limited numbers. So you need not automate them because you, you know, human beings, teams were capable of working on them. But today, every other day, you know, there are not only every other day, I think there are every few hours, new reels, new posts, new stories are going out of a brand. And it's humanly impossible for, you know, us to uh, do everything ourselves. So we need machines to automize, we need because Suppose it's social media, you know, so different posts go out at different time of the day because every al uh, platform has an algorithm where it works, you know, that uh, LinkedIn has a different time of publishing, uh, Insta has a different way of functioning. So everything is impossible doing humanly. So we have machines taking care of, you know, automatic ways of dealing with that. And last is predictive analytics, you know. So AI-powered predictive analytics can provide very relevant insights to improve branding strategy. So it's very futuristic. All the data that we have, all the consumer insight that we have, and extrapolating it to, you know, a future, um, near future, we can plan our marketing activities ahead with the kind of, we, we already know the kind of trend that will work in the next couple of months or probably the next year, and hence, AI amplifies the branding by helping us to predict the future. Now, when it comes to uh, personalization, what all steps that do we go through? So first of all is data analysis. We'll definitely go through each of them in depth in the next slides. After the data analysis, we do our customer segmentation. After that, we, of course, you know, personalize the content that goes out to these various customer segments. And then we have, you know, various other ways of enhancing customer experience. And beyond that, of course, 
predictive personalization, which is an, the next level of elevating customer experience. So what kind of, when, when we say data analysis, what are the different kind of data a brand needs to analyze? Topmost is, of course, your browsing behavior. And, you know, it's like actions you take on the net, tech actions you take on your gadget, the patterns of your browsing, the kind of sites you are viewing, the keywords that are being used. What is the different duration of a site visit? And at what stage a browser leaves a site? So all of these information are, you know, analyzed at the back end. Then we have engagement metrics. What kind of ads and posts does a user engage with? What kind of video are they watching? And how long are they watching? At what point are they living? Uh, are, and, and today there are ads in so many of the videos. Are they looking through those ads or are they you know, skipping through those ads? So various kind of engagement metrics are being measured. Then comes the life cycle stage which is, you know, what stage of purchase decision are you in? Are you new to the brand? Is the brand a new exposure to you? Or are you repeatedly already engaged with the brand? Or, you know, is it just that uh, you probably, you know, engaged with a brand through an Insta ad and you probably also clicked on the shop now. You went through a couple of products, but then you moved out. Then maybe you go to your desktop or a laptop and, open that site and still don't buy. So you are one of the customers that the brand now looks at, you know, offering much more relevant uh, uh, information, much more relevant offers and much more relevant uh, messaging because this customer is almost on the verge of conversion, but just have not taken the decision. So the brand needs to send out customized message to this brand. And, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, and some maybe even get a salesperson to call you up at this point, a person or a bot, whatever, will probably even call you up to, you know, fasten your decision making to purchase the product. Then comes purchase history. Uh, which brand are you using? Which products within those brands are you using? What sizes are being used? What frequency are you buying those products? And have you changed brand in between? So all of this data, again, helps us build a, you know, kind of consumer persona and uh, understand what uh, the, the consumer is looking for. And last is, of course, the demographic data, which is always important, you know, your age, your uh, gender, uh, which is constantly being uh, analyzed. Next is, you know, now based on this data, which is, you know, the whole data set, once they are sorted and, you know, into specific, they are clumped into specific categories and boxes. And now they are used to segmentize the customer universe into smaller sets as per relevance. It's like, you know, somebody says for a food delivery app. So uh, people who has, you know, bakery stuff or breads for breakfast. So that's one category. People who has, you know, South Indian food for breakfast. People who has only healthy food for breakfast. So the app then will send out very, very customized product promotion or offers for only that kind of product, depending on the category that they belong to. Then, of course, you know, uh, it's it's demography based, as I said, gender, age, education, geography based. You know why geography is important. It's it's not only about you know where you are. Of course, it's important because then we need to promote only the local businesses there. Uh, uh, you know, but also because what is the kind of weather is there? You know, and what is the kind of food culture or uh, social culture that uh, prevails in that geographic location, so that one can promote, uh, say, you know, in a 14th of April, I think the whole of India, we have different kind of celebration, somebody's New Year and somebody's Sankranti. But every location, a product or a service will shoot out a very customized, personalized, curated messaging relevant to their festival, because that is what will tug at the heart or, you know, catch their attention. 
then we of course have psychographic uh, you know segmentation which is attitudes opinions beliefs uh you have behavioral uh, at you know uh, segmentation which is usage pattern your brand loyalty life stage as we again discuss what life stage of relationship are you at this moment with a brand then again need based you know suppose i'm talking to a parent you know a brand is talking to a parent so when a when a child is just a toddler i'm not going to promote to them you know a, a co iit coaching center so it will be a totally different kind of uh, uh, product promotion to that segment of parents when the child becomes maybe you know 12 years then it's promoting the coaching centers the education counselors education and loans so at every stage it is a need based products and services which will be promoted to the segment uh we have uh, value based whether you know somebody what religious belief what food belief are you vegan are you vegetarian uh, so all of, all of these so you know the finer the segments the more precise the targeting and higher the connect and the conversion so you know the more finer you can make your segments and shoot out your uh, messaging across platform ac across every touch point the more the rate of success now that we have segmentized you know made them smaller uh, you know segments now we need to personalize the content that goes out to them what are these kind of various kind of content we can shoot out of course product recommendation you know product and services uh, which are relevant for that segment we have dynamic website content depending on when you are on the website already visiting and depending on what is your search pattern during those whatever 1 one, one and a half to 5 10 minutes depending on that the product show like if you visit amazon amazon has like you know lakhs and lakhs of products but suppose you click on you know a particular product suppose you clicked on a certain type of book so that next moment they will only show you books which are similar to that because the algo has already caught up with you they understood what you were looking at you know if you are looking at mba entrance exam uh, books then it will only uh, show you similar kind of uh, uh, products personalized emails and you know uh, newsletters of course you know today i think we don't like receiving spam emails which are made to everybody i i would like a brand to talk to me in a terms of what is my pain point you know so uh, even the way they address me to the way they are talking to me to the product that is being showcased to me and over time the machine learns you know that customer x engages with an email only when there's an image on the top and the image is something like this i mean you know there are various categories of course and hence henceforth only that kind of emails or newsletters will be pushed to that customer so that the engagement rates uh, you know are higher for uh, for the brand a tailored social media targeting that i think we all know you know once you engage with a skin care product rest you know that your entire feed is 10000 skin care product because the algo realize that you are that's the platform algo but even for a brand you know that this person is looking for a skin care suppose i look for a skin care for x brand but a y brand also catches it and then you know the y brand comes up with a probably a much more better pitch better offer better product uh, description definition or you know and maybe i end up buying product y because that resonated more with what i'm looking for uh localized content and messaging yes uh so the, there are again two concepts here also one is geo targeting which is where are you located are you located in even even within mumbai are you in you know borivli are you in thane side are you in navi mumbai in south bombay depending on that the restaurants or whatever other services that i'm promoting will be uh, you know shoot out which is more relevant to you so you know contents on preference of culture of that place or you know selling local business in and if it is across regions then we'll also ensure that we use vernacular language so if i'm promoting the same business in tamil nadu and hyderabad and kolkata 
So the moment I use vernacular language, my conversion rates or my engagement rates definitely go up. Uh, even influencers, you know, you you use regional in, regional influencers today are gaining momentum because of this because they connect better with the audience. They understand the lingo, they understand the culture, they understand what works with the people of that region. Uh, second local content is we have something called geofencing. Uh, it's it's you know geofencing is all about creating a virtual barrier, you know, virtual boundary across a physical space. I'm sure many of you must have seen, you know, the moment you enter a mall, you suddenly get a message from one of the stores in that mall offering you a discount. I mean, uh, let's talk Chayos. So most of the time, Chayos will, you know, ping that uh, you have a coupon left or you have two coupons left for, you know, a chai and a toast or whatever. So that is geo fencing. So the moment you enter that arena, the brands within that arena knows that you are there and using RFID and GPS and, you know, Wi-Fi technology, they start pushing out relevant uh, content and uh, offers for you to increase your conversion. And last is, of course, tailored messaging, which is the norm today. Apart from this content personalization, what are the other you know, personalization that can be done to enhance customer experience of our brand. One is omni-channel integration, you know, smooth integration between all gadgets. If I'm watching YouTube in a mobile and then I want to watch it on my, I, I was on my, in my car and I was traveling, I reach home, now I want to watch the same thing on a bigger screen. So the moment I open YouTube in the bigger screen, the uh, same show or the same video starts playing. So, so that's seamless integration. Uh, responsive design. All apps and websites should be responsive to all different kinds of gadgets. So, you know, if the uh, if it may be large monitors, it could be laptops, notepads, mobiles. Uh, so the you know the design needs to be made responsive. Uh, real time engagement, voice uh, and voice chats, and you know chatbots. Uh, when I'm when you are visiting a site, so there's a real life engagement with a chat bot who helps you navigate through the site instead of you going on searching on your own. So you can just tell the chat bot what are you looking for, what are your preferences, and they will the chat bot will guide you to the particular page. In fact, today many uh, brands also have video call integration you can instantly call do a video call or, or you can book a video call a brand that comes to mind is tanishk so you know you when you are browsing through their app some of their products you can actually do a video call and you can actually check the product there and then uh, then of course uh, personalized customer service real-time insights suggesting you know responses and providing you relevant information for every customer query or, you know, based on historical data. And lastly, as I said, you know, predictive personalization. So uh, through various messages and outreach, you can do upselling and cross-selling based on, you know, a user's past behavior, their purchase history, and their engagement with the brand. So these are some of the brands who does uh, who has taken predictive personalization to the next level, you know, Netflix with their recommendations. I think Netflix today, uh, they're, they're strongest in this personalized rec recommendation. Uh, also Amazon, when you look at a product or you buy a product, it automatically says, you know, customers also bought this or you may also like this product or some other complementary products are also recommended so that say you bought a candle votive so the next they will promote you are actually candles so that, you know, you don't just end up buying a votive. Uh, and of course, Spotify has their own suggested playlist based on your history of listening to Spotify. So what are the impact of this AI powered personalization? If you look at it, you know, the tailoring your product services, marketing messages and experiences based on individual preferences and behavior has a positive impact on customer satisfaction, customer engagement, sales, and loyalty. 
And the good part is all of these actually reduces your marketing cost because your ROI and your ROAS is improved. So you are getting much more engagement or much more conversion with the same dollar spent because the engagement rates or the conversion rates are higher. So now next we move to AI powered automation. We, all, we spoke about AI powered personalization till now. When we come to automation, what are the various things that we can automize? Of course, we know content creation. All of us are using probably chat GPT, mid journey, uh, you know, and uh, tools to automize our content in social media. Uh, we can also automize ad campaigns because uh, AI can help us understand which ad will get a better engagement with what type of target audience. Uh, we have website optimization. We have voice search optimization, uh, predictive analytics, email marketing, which can be optimized, uh, social media management, chatbots, and virtual assistants, and, of course, competitive intelligence. You know, we can optimize the AI in all our pages, can keep searching for, you know, uh, across social media platforms, across various websites, across Google, being everywhere, they can keep searching for what are the competition doing and, uh, you know, sort and analyze the data and give it to you in a relevant format. I just noted down a couple of examples of AI powered automation. As I said, number one is content creation. How can it help? Uh, it By generating content ideas writing and editing those content and distributing the content. Some of the tools, uh, just mentioned it briefly, is, you know, ChatGPT, of course, Google Gemini, we have Midjourney, Dolly, Morph, Morph.ai for video. Uh, email marketing, how can an AI help there? It can help you creating and managing micro lists of your end users so that, you know, you send out relevant emails to the relevant target segment. Uh, sending personalized emails, tracking your performance, tracking the performance of these emails. So we have, of course, Salesforce and CRM. HubSpot is very strong. MailChimp is something many of us use. And, of course, Marketo. Uh, then, of course, social media marketing, uh, managing social media accounts, because today every brand has innumerable social media accounts and they cannot be managed manually. Scheduling and publishing those posts at, you know, pre-fixed times and of course tracking the performance of each and every post and uh, you know reels and stories across the platform and ads of course and last is crm you know tracking your customer interaction transiting transcribing your customer calls and generating reports so, so most of these you know all this automation that the ai is doing is the backbone of it is, you know, NLP, the natural language processing, which is actually helping the, you know, bridging the gap between humans and machines. What NLP does is, you know, it's like language translator. It's like, you know, we don't understand lakhs and millions or I mean, not lakhs, millions and millions of data otherwise, but the machines, you know, sorts them, analyzes them and presents them to us in a manner which is understandable to us and similarly the human language which is used to the voice or you know our uh, text is analyzed by the machine in a you know in a data format and again uh, presented used for the uh, 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 services so some of the applications uh, you know of NLP and AI automation, as I said, you know, chatbots and virtual assistants, sentiment analysis. Uh, so, you know, numerous platforms, many, many, many users are talking about your brand. So how do you understand? Are they talking positive? Are they talking good? Are they talking negative? What is the sentiment that the consumers have about your brand or about your competitive brand? And uh, because only once I know that, you know, consumers are not OK with something, can I actually go back and correct that? So we, it's extremely important to constantly, in fact, on a daily basis, keep a track about what is the uh, sentiment in the social platform regarding our brand. Voice recognition and voice search. 
content generation, language translation, and of course, social media monitoring. These are a couple of things where NLP is used, but NLP is used in many, many other things. Uh, so now we move to you know, AI-powered predictive analytics. So what is predictive analytics? So massive data sets, when they are combined with, you know, the current trends that are going on to identify future patterns and correlation. So you, today's trends and today's data and, you know, extrapolate them and identify a pattern and then correlate them and, you know, form a sort of predict what is going to happen in the future so that you're, as a brand, we can plan better. So these Patterns are used to build predictive models that can forecast future trends of consumer preference, market behavior, and product demand. Some of the tools market, you know, Microsoft Azure, Google AI, or, uh, you know, Amazon SageMaker. Uh, so AI-powered predictive analytics can, are, you know, is used in a couple of these. I've just put up a, a few of them. Is campaign optimization. So your AI can predict, you know, which campaign has a higher chance of resonating with different set of target audience. Of course, we do A-B testing. And that, again, is, you know, A-B testing is also part of this analysis because based on multiple rounds of A-B testing, the AI, the, the machine finally learns, you know, it only improves with each uh, processing and tries to understand what is the brand and what are its consumers and what is going to finally work with them. Uh, so it allows brands to then you know, allocate resources efficiently and improve campaign performance. Second is resource allocation. Because AI can you know, predict demand for a you know, specific product or services in the future, so you can plan your inventory better, you can plan your production capacity better, and also staffing requirements. Uh, predict customer needs. AI can predict customer need and preference going ahead in the near future. So that can help you uh, plan for, you know, your new product development. What are the new products or services that maybe you need to start innovating and look at launching to stay again relevant? Okay, everything has its own challenges and potential pitfalls and we need to be aware of them. And especially when it comes to something which is not in our control because machines, you know, is something that will do whatever is being told to them. They do not have a brain or a mind of their own. So potential changes, uh, uh, you know, challenges when it comes to personalization is for privacy concern. That is where I think human has to be aware, have a check and control in if we are, you know, using any unauthorized data or personal information, because that can really erode a brand's trust. If the consumers, uh, you know, find that their data is being leaked, I think we have had many cases before for many brands, uh, and they also can fall under, you know, regulatory compliance issues that does, you know, creating a lot of tarnishing the brand's image completely. Second is algorithmic bias. Uh, algorithmic bias because the, it, uh, the machine will work on whatever data is provided. So if the data or the al algorithm itself is biased, it can lead to discriminatory outcomes. I think one of them, one of the cases recently was, you know, Air Canada issue where the chatbot misfired and, uh, you know, promised a flyer. Uh, something, you know, so which is not a part of the airline's policies. But probably the data which was fed into it wasn't accurate. And hence the machine picked that up and promised the flyer. And But later the airline was not okay with giving it because it is not a part of their policy. But I think now the court has asked Air Canada to bear that cause because a chatbot is a brand's brand-owned uh, tool. So uh, they have to take the responsibility of the chatbot misfiring. And I think uh, it's uh, in a hot news now, you know, Google, Google Gemini uh, misfired some information uh, which on, you know, it was found racial or discriminatory. And I think a lot of hoo-ha is on about that. So 
so yeah, I mean, we need to be really careful about what data we are putting in. And there's also this whole thing about filter bubble. This is a big worry because, you know, how do a new brand or a category or, you know, different kind of perspective uh, cut through this bubble to the users? If I'm only uh, seeing what I keep seeing and I'm not getting to see other things on my feed, how much am I missing out as a user? And how much are those brands missing out because they are not able to cut through this bubble? So these are some challenges. Uh, some challenges when it comes to automation, of course, job displacement is a big, big concern, uh, especially, you know, entry level job of basic data entry or, you know, a, a, a design creator or simple content creator. So uh, that is, of course, an issue. Then there is, you know, ethical dilemma, especially when it comes to very, very sensitive sectors like healthcare, finance and justice. These are very sensitive, very high risk areas. So I think a judicial usage of AI automation along with human intervention is a must in areas, in these areas. And then, you know, over-reliance on machines can also sometimes backfire. It could be, you know, uh, you can't over-rely on a machine. You need to have an in a human element uh, checking through whether if, if the machine is functioning properly. And uh, lastly, you know, uh, AI power predictive analytics, the challenges is, you know, number one is data quality and bias. We have already discussed this. If the data itself is inaccurate, the prediction will, of course, be inaccurate. And if you base your future decision on that inaccurate prediction, your decision is going to be flawed and that can backfire on the brand. Uh, unforeseen foreseen events and machine cannot uh, predict you know, economic crisis, it cannot predict a sudden shift in consumer behavior or a natural disaster. Also, there's scope for misinterpretation because, you know, machine and human, you know, the whole uh, collaboration, there are, there's a chance that, you know, we ourselves do not understand what the, what kind of data the machine needs to give us a certain kind of information or what data is the machine using to give us a certain kind of analysis or prediction and that can lead to errors so there has to be checks and balances there uh dr naginda do we have time yes okay okay so very quickly you know i've just listed down a couple of toolkits uh, for different uh, ai um, you know that we can use and uh, uh, then we have a couple of interesting examples which I want to showcase to all of you. So, you know, on anal in analytics, there's a couple of analytical tools which are very popular, which are being used, the Tableau, the Microsoft Power BI, Rapid Miner, IBM Watson. And uh, for a generative AI, I think most of us are already using. In copy, we have ChatGPT, Google Gemini. Uh, Jasper. In visual, we have Midjourney, Doll E3, Adobe Firefly, and the others. And audio and voiceover, we have, you know, Murph.ai, Spitchify, Clip.audio. Let's look at some of the interesting, ex you know, work that couple of well-known brands are uh, doing and producing in the space of, and how are they using AI, you know? So it's interesting. Just give me a second. I think I have somehow lost. Yeah. So this is Nike, you know, Nike Fit. So they have an app, Nike Fit, uh, which uses the AI algorithm and a smartphone to find the right model and shoe size. So users can just take a photo of their feet and the app will scan it to figure out their size. So this is their... Is it visible? Yes. Should I yes. expand it? Yes. It's visible.
So this was Nike. We have another example. So this is again, you know, Netflix, as I already spoke about it, you know, how they use AI to, you know, uh, uh, specifically and very uh, accurately uh, recommend shows and uh, shows to their users. So they use a, you know, user specific auto generated thumbnails, even the thumbnails that is you see of a particular show is different for different users. So here you can see, you know, uh, for the show Stranger Things, there are different kind of thumbnail generated. So for a person who likes probably, you know, spooky kind of uh, shows, maybe the top left one works well for them, you know. But for somebody else, they may not click on if they see that thumbnail. For another person who probably like, you know, family shows, uh, family, kids, so for them, maybe the middle row, the center one works better when they see that thumbnail and maybe they'll click on that. Uh, the propensity that they will click on this increases. And similarly, you know, so so very many thumbnails are created and pushed out to different sex user segment to get a higher rate of click. Then we have Coca-Cola who recently did this very interesting, you know, they had this whole uh, creator uh, team uh, of, you know, human and uh, of, you know, their fans actually, who they asked about their perspective about, you know, what is their, uh, you know, envision of a future Coca-Cola, what is, and together with it, they clubbed AI's, you know, predictions and formed this Coca-Cola, which is the taste of Y3000, which is 26 years uh, or, or 76 years from now, sorry, we are only in 2024. So I'll run you through that, Ed. I actually couldn't get hold of the actual ad of this. So that is the teaser, and this is the actually how the brand, uh, the can looks like. I think it's available in US and Canada as of now in Australia. The next is uh, Samsung Galaxy, you know. So there's this whole concept of virtual influencers today. So Lil Michaela is one of the most popular virtual influencer. I think she has approximately 3 million or more than that probably across mediums. And Samsung has recently used her as uh, one of their, you know, pro game team's uh, ad. Everything seemed unimaginable when I was just a few lines of code. I love creating new things, achieving the impossible. That's what being part of Team Galaxy is all about. Team Galaxy. Do what you can't. Isn't this interesting? And in fact, this was released just two days back. So Alibaba.com has been working on a robot called Emo. And, uh, you know, and, and they have, in fact, a whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, institution who is working on various AI formats. And they have released this Emo short for Emote Portrait Alive. The system seamlessly animates a single photo into a lifelike video, you know, where the subject can speak or even sing, all driven by an audio input. So you just give one static image and an audio, it could be a speech or a music, and the video automatically. So the AI at the back end starts, you know, simulating that entire experience. I'll just show you a couple of them. There's a lot of supersonic speed. Uh, like a play date, but a vacay retreat, like a vacay mayday. This beat is cray cray, Ray J, H A H A H A. Laughing all the way to the bank. I spray flames that cannot tame or placate the monster. You get in my way, I'ma feed you to the monster. Normal during the day, but at night turn to a monster. 
We were All good and in love, not knowing what it was. I will not. We were going, we were gone. Can the dream that can be so? We are characters. We have even Mona Lisa speaking. One, and in this manner, he was to imagine me his love, his mistress, and I set him every day to woo me, at which time would I, being but a moonish youth, grieve, be effeminate, changeable, longing, and liking, Proud, fantastical, apish, shallow. So yeah, the future of branding is here and it is definitely being driven by AI. So that's all my presentation is all about. So uh, open to take questions if there are any. Thanks so, so much. Uh... Yeah. I'm stopping sharing as of now. Yeah, quite exhaustive, very exhaustive. <laughs> uh, and uh, we have quite a lot of questions. And depending on oh. your time, uh, I'll take one by one. Sure. And uh, the first question is from uh, 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 Mr. Kiran uh, Nagmandi. His question is: I'm keen to understand how AI can uh, bring the emotional element into branding and marketing because I always believe the emotional element is quite an influencer on sales. Thank you, Kiran. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, emotion is what I think all humans we connect with and everything that is, in fact, that is what the topic of the subject uh, topic today was also, you know, humanize with data. Of course, it is data and it is machines, but what you are doing is it's human beings who are using that data finally. So it is, in fact, helping you become much more emotional and human as a brand because you are touching on the pulse of the consumers that... Uh, you know, matters to them. Uh, you are touching in their on their pain points or or something that they are seeking. So, in fact, I would say uh, today the brands are even far more human than we were earlier because earlier it was a very top down approach. Brands did what they did and uh, hoped that you know consumers will connect and relate. But today, I think we are able to touch the pulse and become much more human and much more emotional. Thank you. Uh, this is a question from Mr. Gaurav uh, Baumek. His question is, with access to AI tools being made easy to common people, how do we address the uh, negative side of AI in terms of other competition uh, brand, unsatisfied consumers, and so therefore called self-made influencer trying to use AI to defame the brand name? Thank you, Gaurav. Quite a uh, loaded question. <laughs> Yeah, it is loaded. And uh, uh, see, I think, it. Uh, of course, it is open AI today. You know, we have open source, we have open codes, and everybody can use and do whatever. But uh, and that is how I'm aware I think two things have to come into play. Uh, the brand teams or the, you know, the have to be very, very conscious that they are doing everything ethically right. Because at the end of the day, one must not forget that a, the trust of the brand is of utmost importance and once lost it's difficult to rebuild it takes ages to build a brand you know identity or build trust for a brand so uh, let us not take it uh, you know lightly and use ai uh, recklessly uh, and and as you said you know it's open to everybody and but that's a fair game and yes, we are, of course, uh, facing a lot of regulatory issues in terms of deep fakes and all today. And I think the governments all across the globe are working with the, you know, uh, to find solution of how do we understand whether a video or an audio or a person who's speaking is actually the person or an AI version of it. I think, I don't know. I don't know the solution. I think we are all new to this game and we are all just trying to understand where it all leads us. I think uh, when the good technology falls in the hands of wrong people. <laughs> that's, yes, yes. That's the negative that. always prevails, but we have to, that, that should not again stop growth. Absolutely. And we have two questions from Anjali Dattar. First question, uh, uh, Manjimala, is uh, what is the success of BOT marketing? Are they giving the required ROI 
or are they turning by uh, junk and her second question is uh, when it comes to creating content how much is ai non bias ai works on data set and what are the rules and standard or a standard uh, employed to ensure that design content is sensitive thank you anjali for both the questions okay uh, yeah bot marketing i, I think uh, it, it's here to st stay as i said you know you, the 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 large volume that we are all working with today when it comes to marketing is impossible to do it humanly so the bots have to be brought in and as far as you said you know uh, i forgot the second question sorry yes sir on uh, her question uh, second question is when it comes to creating content how much is ai non biased ai works on data set and what are the rules or standard employed to ensure that design content is sensitive yes so uh, i think there again you know a, a lot of onus lies on the brand themselves but yes of course on the ai machine also and that is why i think today google gemini is in trouble because some of the answers it has produced are not you know sensitive responses which means that the data which was fed into it or whatever the data it has you know uh, crawled around the globe's web and found is not uh, Uh, unbiased and hence it is able to you know probably throw uh, wrong ans answers and hence again a human check and human intervention is important even for the creatives you cannot just automate ask your bot to create something and push it out without a check and balance because uh, that will be harakiri and uh, this is a question from mr db i don't know full name unfortunately could you specify the content creation ai tools uh, typically in use today Thank you, Mr. Devi. I think I already shared a slide of that. Uh, it's all for the copy. We have ChatGPT, Gemini we, for for a video, audio uh, for uh, pictures and visuals. We have Midjourney, we have Dolly, we have uh, just now we showed Alibaba. Uh, you know, uh, Emo. Yeah. And uh, this is a question from Mr. Neeraj Kumar. I think this is something. Uh, Uh, before uh, AI, I believe, but maybe uh, even today. And this question is impact of company logo for brand. I think it's big. It's, uh, but you also have to see that it's it's it does not have. I mean, you know, it, I, I there's no formula of how to make it relevant apart from the fact that the logo per se does not probably speak uh, everything. your story around it your communication around it your messaging through it is what builds a connect and a story in the minds of the consumers and that is what finally sells today if you look at zomato i mean if you if you ask me why that name i don't know i, I you know but uh, probably to, probably tomato <laughs> but but you know the kind of uh, messaging they do the kind of you know so they have made a space in the hearts of the users you know as being an uh, a brand that sort of uh, makes fun makes things fun and 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 are a very light hearted and fun app and uh, this is a question from mr vijay gaikwad his question is how is uh, a monitoring social media platforms uh, 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 do we have examples uh, uh, in any one of these yes ai is monitoring every social media so we have social listening tools also tools like meltwater and there are a couple of others so what what they do is constantly so you have to you know uh, feed them what kind of data you want from them so you feed your own brand name you ask them to uh, analyze each time your brand is mentioned plus analyze each time your brand is mentioned what is the emotion is it angry is it distrust is it love and you also then can feed in your competitors name and tell them every time and do the same for them basically you know what are the competitors putting out how are the users or the viewers taking it so the, so there are tools you know so you can deploy some of these tools to constantly listen to your target audience and uh, this is a question from mr kiran nagbandi his question is with deep penetration of ai awareness in everyone would it not be very far from customer uh, becoming insensitive by the uh, overlook of too much use of ai thank you kiran <laughs> that's a potential challenge i believe <laughs> uh, uh yeah customers today are bombarded with too many personalized messages so much of personalized that every brand is personalizing that at one point 
probably a customer also turns a blind eye to that if there is a possibility but at the same time if you do not then you lose out and probably that is where the challenge of the creativity comes in how creatively you can personalize and connect using ai and uh, that's how you will build a relationship with the audience great so uh, we uh, we have two questions so maybe uh, interesting questions from uh, ranjit kumar his first question is uh, which ai methodology to be used by which industry and the second question is when does an industry should uh, decide to move to ai uh which kind of ai in the sense you know i think every uh, kind as i said you know ai is for personalization ai is for automation ai is for predictive analysis so you have to decide for which industry one belongs to what is more important and uh, so maybe a financial uh, brand but but today even financial brands are really talking to their end user very closely and in fact they are also humanizing uh, you know uh the other day i saw some i think it was tata insurance who has come up with the latest ad which is no more a very boring financial services ad so it was all about you know a stand up comedian actually doing the ad so sort of you know lightening it up for the end user and also because uh india is at the crux where the we have our largest number of young population with us so you know the kind of language we are gradually using for the next gen is changing we cannot we are no more able to talk to you know financial services used to talk in a very boring tone earlier very boring strict tone today it is changing because the users are changing and the future users are them so if i have to build a relevance with that target audience then i have to talk in a language that resonates with them so i think it's a it's a very brand specific decision one has to make which kind of ai will work for you but these are primarily three specific broad areas where you can use ai and uh, the second last question for today evening uh, uh, manimala is uh, from uh, aparna mudi her question is uh, what are the ethical implications governments are considering uh, are there any new laws that you predict will come up for brands to use ai especially for data collection thank you aparna yes i think we already have passed the dp uh, that data protection law, uh, law right so that's making it difficult for brands today so data uh, one has to be very wary of how one is using the data how how one is collecting the data also and today consumers are given the right to say no at certain point many times you know i know that when we go to even a mall the last minute when you are checking out they very innocently ask you you know can i have your mobile number so it's as if you know they need it for the billing Mm. but as a consumer today we have the right to say that i don't need to give you my mobile number for the billing it's okay i'm it's fine without the name or the number exactly so, and uh, aparna has a follow up question uh, for you uh, manimali her question is uh, in your opinion how quick will the decentralization to the hyper targeted uh, targeted marketing happen i did not uh, how quickly uh, will the decentralization to the hyper targeted uh, marketing will happen desensitization why will there be desensitization of a hyper marketing you know because i think all of us today look forward to hyper marketing because we do not want cluttered messages or cla we would rather one brands who are relevant to us only talking to us rather than anybody and every like you know i remember the other day i spoke to a brand i had probably engaged with them when my child was 5 years old buying some toys today my child is 20 years you know but they still send me some message about kids toys so i actually called up i said i i mean your your ai should just catch it today you know and that uh, this is no more a relevant message for this person so it's a waste of their energy effort money and um, unnecessary marketing spend and unnecessary showing that the conversion or the open rates are low because i never open them <laughs> the last question for today evening uh, manimal is from abhishek gairola his question is uh, how soon do you think ai will replace digital marketing as a business or a position thank you abhishek ai will your voice suddenly you know uh, ai will replace uh, uh, digital marketing as a business or position but ai is an enabler ai is not a method ai is not one of the marketing 
uh, ways ai is only enabling every form of marketing be it traditional i mean netflix uh, if you look at it, it's it's you no know, it's we are watching it on our big screen small screen wherever but uh, that is where they are using ai in a different manner and similarly ai ai is just an enabler let's not forget that uh, we are not talking about robots i don't know about robots specifically but maybe one day yes Thank you so much, Manimal. I think we have already overshot by 15 minutes, but thank you so much and once thank again so for giving so us much. time. Thanks to everybody. Table. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here, and thanks to everybody who attended. And it it has been a great pleasure, and I think I learned the maximum while making this presentation for all of you. <laughs> and all the questions thank were you. interesting questions. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much from all of us, uh, Manimal. Thank you so much for Pleasure. Thanks.